if this person is no longer with the company uh, in six months, you are not going to get this money. You can't make others happy on an empty stomach, right? You'll be grumpy. Right now, I think I'm a bit tired of uh, struggling creating companies. Every single time you created a business, you had it sold in a matter of seconds. None of your businesses have had significant growth. You're watching the Misfit Founders Podcast, a raw conversation about the challenges of building businesses, overcoming hardships, and also feeling out of place. I'm Biro, an exited founder, investor, and advisor who failed quite a few businesses in the past. My mission with Misfit Founders, to help at least one founder every single month by unveiling the authentic stories of other founders and providing guidance and support. So I hope you enjoy the podcast today and get useful insights out of it. And if you do, do join the conversation on our WhatsApp community where we discuss topics like this one in this podcast, in group, as well as uh, private sessions. Link in the video description. Also, please subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you're notified when we publish new videos. Mr. Gorka. Mr. Biro. <laughs> Hi. I feel I'm trying to figure out, did I have you on my previous podcast? I think I did. Yeah. On the Startup Corner podcast. Yeah, we did a special Christmas. Special Christmas edition. Yes. Yeah. But that one was, I wouldn't say scripted, but I had the questions for you prepared. Mm. Hey, here's what I'm going to ask you. I think it was something like making my parents proud or something like that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That was the title of it. Well, this time there's no more questions, no more script. It's yeah, just you, didn't you say and anything. I having a conversation. So thank you for doing this. It feels like I know you forever. Um, and we were actually talking if we ever met in person and realized that we actually didn't. It's the first Yesterday, time. first time. Yeah. But we've been talking for more than two years, three years. Yeah, it's crazy how many, how many friendships and how many connections you make, um, especially with the pandemic in the middle. And you realize, oh, it feels like I know this person forever. But in reality, <laughs> I don't. I've not met you in person. Yeah, until that happens today. several times now in Not Fire. Yeah. Uh, you have meetings every other day with a person and then... You go to an event, it's like, oh, it's the first time I see you in person. Like, you are bigger or smaller. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's kick it off with a quick introduction. Who is Gorka? A bit of your background and also what's your business? The business that you actually sold uh, yeah. just now. Well, Gorka is a product manager. Mm -hmm. um, I studied computer science. I did a PhD in web information systems, although I specialize in corporate wikis. That's how I arrived at the Atlassian Confluence. ecosystem. Yeah. My thesis was uh, I developed uh, these plugins for MediaWiki at that time. Mm -hmm. And and then I moved to, to Confluence. OK. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to start by going to um, my degree. I finished computer science, so I didn't know English. What I did, I got a grant, and I came to the uh, UK. Mm -hmm to uh, try to open a business for a home automation systems company. Okay. So yes, fresh from the University of Orca, uh, we need to open a new branch in in the United Kingdom, whatever you want. And I was like, OK, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but uh, let's try. So it's like, I speak no English, man. <laughs> yeah, and trying to learn English. Man. And, and I had no idea, so I didn't do it. I mean, uh, I tried. I went to first. I contacted like providers and everything. And then I did this from Edinburgh. I, I chose Edinburgh. So hold on a second. So you didn't speak English and you chose well, to go to... I, I was learning. I, you're I had, learning, but you chose to go to the place where they have the thickest accent ever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if uh, when I finished and I came back, I could fully understand a, a, a Scottish, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, with uh, their, their accent. And yeah, I was there for nine months. I, I kind of learned English because I was every day studying English and interacting with people and, and with the, this company, a home automation company. And one day I received a call from a research group offering me a, a, a contract mm -hmm. to go back to, um, to um, my university in San Sebastián Donostia, in the Basque country, in the north of Spain. 
And I said, well, why not? I want to, to specialize and keep on learning about uh, computer science. And that's what I did. And I did uh, the PhD. This is like four years that I summarize in a few seconds yeah. because um, it took me like four years to uh, pr uh, prepare all the research, uh, publish the articles, um, journals, a lot of conferences. And I present the thesis. And during that time, there was these uh, projects we had with uh, private companies, uh, university, the private company. And sometimes it was European projects and sometimes uh, national projects. Mm -hmm. And there was always a challenge that the university had to try to solve with uh, innovation. And then there was the company that uh, should develop the technology based on our contribution. And then another company or several companies uh, waiting for that solution. And what I saw in those projects is that my proof of concepts were finally the product. And I was like, uh, wait a moment. So I'm doing a proof of concept, developing something. And this company is commercializing then uh, for the, these customers. What Bastards. if I, <laughs> what <laughs> if I do that on my own? Yeah. Because I can do a, a full product, right? And that was my, my idea uh, for starting a company. I said, okay, let's try to, to do that. But I didn't know how to create a company. So I finished my, my, my PhD and I was like, mm, okay, now what? Uh, so what I did, I joined this um, entrepreneurship program in my area. And I was there like a few months, almost a year, developing the business plan and everything. And I was lucky enough to, to win this kind of contest. And one of the, um, the things they gave me is an office for a year for free. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, that's uh, a big, big win in a sense. You don't yeah. have to pay rent for a year, yeah. especially because I suppose this was this was a long time ago, wasn't it? Uh, that, this is in 2013. Yes, and, and by that ago. point, it was abnormal to have a business from home, right? Re yeah, remote, yeah, you yeah. had to have you, an you office, an office. And, yeah, yeah. physical presence. Yeah, yeah. And another um, of the of the uh, things that they gave me is um, the opportunity to travel to Silicon Valley. Oh, wow. And yeah, and there we were like, I don't know how many people from different parts of Spain, like visiting, I don't know, Mountain View, Google. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I had already been there with uh, doing my PhD. I had presented, in, for example, in Microsoft Research Center, uh, a paper that I published. So I, I had that experience. So that uh, wasn't something special for me. But the office, wow, it was very special because um, I had the the opportunity to be in a place with other companies in, in the same uh, building and I could start collaborating and, and, and creating the first company that I created. That's the point where you started your first company. Right. And you said this is 2013. Yeah, yeah. I created like the, the, the company at the end of that year mm -hmm. in or the beginning of 2014. And during that year, uh, um, well, in 2013, I already started going to uh, the Atlassian Summit right? and to the Atlas Camp. How? How did you get into the Atlassian ecosystem? Well, like, well, how, how did so, that come across? So I knew pretty much every single wiki engine that there was out there because of my research. And, and I started to develop plugins. And for some of those uh, wiki engines, it was di really difficult. I remember even... Uh, have to decompile others to see how to implement a new plugin. But Confluence in that time, uh, they already have a pretty nice documentation for developers. All oh, right, okay. And, and, and you're into this um, documentation management uh, space and the Confluence was the basically the easiest um, entry point yeah. in, in developing and, extensions. And they had a marketplace. Well, for me, it was like, oh, so I can create an app, put it there, yeah. And, and it's going to be sold. And it's like, okay, going to try that. And I love from the very moment that I knew Confluence as a wiki engine. And, and I started to attend the, the, the conferences to understand the ecosystem, the mm -hmm. players. And that's how I started to, to meet uh, Roberto from uh, Comalatec or Randall from Affire or, yeah. or many other founders. And, and I started to, to see... Um, partners that now are my friends, like uh, Deisa from, from Spain, Guillermo and Dani, I met them in those events. 
even those events. I met David Bonilla, that I'm going to uh, mention later, that he was the Atlassian ambassador for Spain. And he introduced me to, to many people in the ecosystem. So I started the company and I started to develop apps. Right. And these apps, there is the, the first big mistake. Well, I, I made many mistakes. Uh, so we could stay here talking about my mistakes. But uh, the first one, not the first, but kind of the biggest, because that later uh, made me run out of money. It was, I had two... Uh, products that I wanted to develop mm -hmm. based on my research. And I have one that uh, was easier to develop, and then, but uh, with probably less market. And the other was more complex, but I thought that uh, it really had a potential. I still do. And it's been almost 10 years. And, and I said, okay, so if I start by the complex one, maybe I don't finish that on time. I run out of money. And I had to uh, start another thing because it's too complex. And I, I don't know how to create a, an app in, for Confluence. So I'm going to start by implementing the ACS one. So I learn and I understand how to develop an app. The problem is that I started with that and I ran out, out of money with the simplest one because I didn't know how to do things, right? And uh, what I had to do is to start developing uh, custom plugins for uh, companies, for third-party... Mm -hmm. uh, to make money, basically. Yes, to make money. Doing services. Services, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. business. So yeah. I started to do that. The problem with that is that I didn't have time for my own products. I had to work for others. And I had two friends that helped me as contractors in that time. Until the time I could hire uh, a person full-time. Mm -hmm. That this person is today in Adfire through Comalatex, so uh, I still have uh, Interesting. Yeah, and he's my friend, Juan, and everything. And, and there was that the, the first mistake that I did is like uh, trying to do something to learn instead of uh, to build a business. And then I moved to services to pay for the product, but I was a single person, so there, there was no way I could do both things mm. at the same time doing everything on my own and developing, because in that time I was developing uh, the products. But that made me get in contact with other companies. In that time, there was this other company that uh, asked me for, I was, remember, me and another person, and this company asked me for a very big project of uh, six people for six months doing services. And I was like, sure, here is uh, uh, what I... What are I going to charge you? Here's an invoice, and uh, now let me find those six people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, do, can you do that? Of course I can do that. Six people, six months, no problem. This is what I'm going to charge you. And the company was like, if you charge me that, I think I can acquire you for less money. Right. And that's how I started my first conversation to, to sell uh, my first company. And, and again, I was there. I had no idea of creating a company, and mm -hmm. I was in the middle of a, an acquisition. And so what I did is ask someone who knew more than me. It was Roberto from Comalatec. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, Roberto, this is happening. I don't know what to do. Uh, he was like, okay, or can I go into Spain? Because he, he lives in Vancouver. Let's meet and let's discuss. And out of that discussion was like, if you are going to sell your company to them, I'm I, I going to acquire your company. I'm going to give you more. And I was like, now I go to two. them, sell to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, don't sell them sell to me and we are going to work together. And that's what I did because I didn't know what to do with a, a company. I didn't know how to run a company. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about the business, the ecosystem, and I didn't have more money. So that was my opportunity to learn everything and uh, prepare because I needed preparation uh, for my next gig, right? It, this is interesting because what it sounds to me is in the beginning of 2014, you started a, a product business. Hmm. You wanted to build extensions and, and improve um, basically documentation management systems hmm. like Confluence. You got into Confluence because that was the um, easiest and the most straightforward and the most documented hmm. um, and with a marketplace. system with a marketplace so you can launch hmm. and make money out of that. You 
decided to, you had the fear that every single person, every single entrepreneur that starts like myself and yourself and everyone else has, which is, am I going to run out of money and not be able to deliver this? And you went for what you thought was an easier, um, an, an easier implementation. And I've been, I've gone through the same thing with, with Nikki, when we built our first app, we were like, oh yeah, we're going to build it in two, three months. And we launched it in six months. Um, cause we didn't realize all the intricacies of the APIs and the SDKs and everything. And it took us twice the amount of time. And then because you run out of money, you had to go down the route of uh, consultancy services, which I feel that this is such a, such a deja vu with a lot of companies that want to build a product. They have that expertise but they need to pay themselves. So they need to start um, doing consultancy, although that's not their primary um, interest, which wasn't yours because you're at heart a product owner, a product manager, right? Hmm. And then uh, you started conversations around acquisition very early on, it sounds like. So when did, so you, start, you, you started your business very early 2014. When did you start conversations um, with these two companies to get acquired? Uh... I don't remember, but maybe after six months, seven months. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And that's the power of, of being part of an ecosystem and, and meeting so many companies and so many people, hmm. isn't it? Because that was the same with us. We, we got funding from Christian from Resolution hmm. early on because we knew people. And all of the acquisition discussions for us started because we knew people in the ecosystem. Right. And and with these um, with these two companies, so you... you have, you obviously went with Comalatech because you've been working at Comalatech for a while. So I suppose it was more of an accu hire this first um, acquisition. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, there was money like uh, cash mm -hmm. at front. Then it was that we hire. We negotiated. I negotiated, of course, not just for me, but for uh, my my employee because that was important. Because this person trusted me. Mm -hmm. He was in a huge company, public company, and he came to my company that single person and I told him, hey, I got money for a few months, but don't worry, this is gonna be great. And he was like, okay, uh, I trust you. And he, he, he probably had conversations like, look, if things go bad, I'll come work yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah, and he, he was good, so he could be back in that company, right? Yeah, so, yeah. But still, he trusted me and I negotiated in the contract um, uh, up to a point that there was this clause saying, "Hey, if if um, kind of if this person is no longer with the company uh, in six months, you are not gonna get this money." So I right, said, yeah. "Sure, uh, I go for that." Right. So I trusted him also, and then uh, there was also money for objectives. You get that? And I said, "Sure," and I went for for that, and it went well. It went well. Well, I think I think that's usually the case with um, with Accu hires because basically you're not being acquired for your technology, for your IP, for your product. You're acquired for your skills, mm -hmm. and when that happens, is the buyer wants to ensure that the people that they that they're acquiring will be there in six months, and also ensure that they're delivering because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's not something that already exists. It's something that you will be producing for that company. Mm -hmm. So I understand um, why Kumalatik done, mm -hmm. done that. And I was expecting it to go well because, you know, you've you've had the experience and the passion at that point and the hunger, mm -hmm. I suppose, to make things yeah. happen. And uh, we brought to Kumalatik, I don't remember, three or four apps that we had already mm -hmm. in less than a year. And one app is still on the marketplace. And oh. it's still making money. Making money. Yeah, yeah. That's so good. yeah, that was a good uh, acquisition for Comalatec. Uh, yeah. I suppose, yeah. And, and for how long were you there? Uh, more than four years. Four years. Yeah. Wow. At the beginning, we were when I when there they, there were five people, I think, mm -hmm. plus me and, and Juan. So we were seven. And when I left, there were like I don't know forty something like that, or yeah, or thirty something. Yeah, we opened an office. We didn't have a, a physical office. Mm -hmm. That now is one of the uh, fires offices in the biggest in Spain. We got two. My city, the smallest, uh, Vitoria, and then in Bilbao. And we opened the office and everything. And now probably you're thinking, why you left? Uh, that was my next question. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, uh, four years, like I worked for 
a company in London for five years, and it was it was a great experience. But depending on on your desires and your character, you can also get a bit complacent complacent and and comfy in a sense and say well this is you know i've been here for four years been achieving so much this is a comfortable place mm. what what made you leave yeah um i didn't have skin in the game as you said right um i didn't have any motivation for working as i was working mm -hmm. i don't know work in another way i work i always work i'm always thinking of uh the problems at work but uh, it's fine. It's what I like. It's what yeah, I yeah. enjoy. But uh, I also need motivations, challenges. And I had a huge amount of work. Uh, there was pressure because I had to deliver for many things. In that moment, I was the only person, the product person in the company. Yeah. And we had many products, uh, really complex products, um, Komala workflows. Well, I was not the only person because we had hired another uh, product manager, Alex, that now works with me. In... And there was many things that, so one day, one Sunday I said, oh, tomorrow I had to go to work. And it was the well, first time in my life that I think that way. Because for me, Sunday should be another day in the week. Yeah. Uh, Monday is fine because I enjoy my work. But in that moment, I wasn't enjoying going to, to work uh, Mondays. I was right. like, oh, there is a problem. I had to solve this. And I talked to Roberto and said, hey, Roberto, uh, I, I don't feel fine. Yeah. I think uh, I'm going to move. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to go back. And he even offered, hey, why don't you, while you think what to do, you stay like part-time with us and mm -hmm. the other part of the day uh, thinking of what are you going to do? And I appreciate that, that he did uh, that. But um, that, that was not going to be enough because when you are in a project, focus on an idea, you are full-time. Yeah. So what I did, what we, what we did is we stay like, maybe four, six months or something like that, until we prepare the way for uh, moving out of Comalatec because I was in the middle of many things. So we had more people, we restructured because I was product manager, but I work a lot in support uh, with uh, other teams. So we organized everything and then and I left. And I left uh, as a, and I joined another company as a late co-founder. Yeah. This new company, uh, Manfred, was founded by David Bonilla, the one that was the Spanish ambassador that uh, I mentioned before, the yeah. Spanish ambassador for Atlassian. And he also worked in Comalatec as a CEO for one year. And he left to create this company, and it was about um, technical recruiting. So, um, and we started, well, it was David Bonilla and, and Inter, and I joined as a late co-founder, a small uh, share. Uh, I was a, a small shareholder, and we were supposed we were gonna do a platform for recruiting, like uh, I don't know greenhouse or. And let me get this. This is mm. the start of Ronin Pixels. No, no. Oh, this is. It was different... in the middle. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Go on. Yeah, and and I was there. So we had the same issue. We needed money to create a product. And what we did at the beginning is services. So kind of normal services, but uh, with a more human approach for uh, recruiting. So um, a company came, I need a software developer, Java, blah, blah, with this salary. Okay. We had very strict rules of you have to offer a first salary. Otherwise, we're not going to look for a candidate. And of course, we, we check the, the market this company were, was looking and everything. So at the end of the day, I was doing uh, recruiting services, like uh, we charge by, uh, if I get you a person and this person stays with you, like, uh, I don't know, at least three months, we get the money and everything. You get uh, these, these perks and everything. And because we didn't have the money to create a product team, we need the services again. And we say, okay, uh, we know what to do. We get the ball rolling, we get money from services, and then we create a team, and these services is gonna fuel our yeah, product yeah. team. That's really difficult, that's really difficult. Um, now they are doing that, but mm -hmm. after several years, now they get uh, enough money from services to pay the salaries of services plus product, because product, you need a big team also, right? 
And the thing is that this company was sold, or David sold the company after one year I was there. And I was like, no, why not? Why now? Uh, this is a rocket. Uh, don't sell it. And uh, I understand his situation. Um, yeah. Money, he's got family. Um, yeah. So I was there again after one year. <laughs> uh, like uh, I left Komala Tech, I stayed in this company for one year. I get some money, of course, because I, I, I had a percentage. You had percentage. Of it. But so this is I, your second acquisition, basically. Yeah, that was the, the second. That, that was the second acquisition. Yeah. And and I said, okay, now that I got money, because uh, when I went uh, to this huge company that acquired us, I still had my late co-founder salary. It was super low. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't negotiate that. And I was like, oh, so now I got a really low salary working for a very big company, uh, working as crazy because I always work the same way. Yeah. And it's like, uh, no, that cannot happen. Oh, don't worry, in a year or something. In a year, in a year what? I want to wait for a year for what? And I was like, okay, sorry, I'm leaving. Yeah. But they didn't have, so um, compared to the previous um, deal with Comalatec, you didn't have a um, stay clause. No, I didn't have anything. One. Okay, so no. I, I guess that that was their um, their mistake, but also in a sense, it would have probably been difficult for you if they would have forced you to stay for a year or whatever. But if they offer like a proper challenge project, mm -hmm. a goal or something, and I got I don't know equity of this company, that's fine. I I don't have any problem working for others. Yeah, because yeah. I learn a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, like now in a fire. I'm perfectly fine with having managers. The thing is that I need the challenge and something to work for. There are many things. There is culture. We can talk later yeah. about uh, acquisition and fire. But if I got and you need to eat, right? <laughs> but I had a really low salary, yeah. like super low. Yeah. Like, uh, and I was like, uh, no. And that, to be honest, you know, some people say, well, oh, it doesn't matter because I got uh, an exit exit money. But fundamentally. That's not really valid because that exit amount is with AccuHires, um, with, sorry, with AccuHires, with, with um, product companies, it's usually for what you've achieved so far as well, as well as your potential moving forward. So it's not really fair to say, well, I'm paying your exit money, but I'm not going to give you a proper salary. You'd be on, on very low salary. Yeah, because as you mentioned, it's for what you have done. Mm -hmm. Because you maybe have worked in a camp in your startup for four years, yeah. they are paying those four years that you've been putting money, yeah, yeah. that you didn't get any salary. So yeah. it does feel like these two exits, um, your departure from the buyer, are completely different. Um, hmm. So, like with the first one you mentioned, leaving after four years, I think, um, and I think that your um, employer at Comala. Um, who was the Roberto? Roberto, Roberto is. Yes. I think Roberto was really understanding and knew what it means because you know people that people that hold on bosses that hold on to people to good people without really thinking if those individuals are still a fit for the company at that stage or if they're still motivated at a completely different stage are not really thinking about the well-being of their team hmm. members right because i've seen this in the past where um a leader a boss whatever a founder would just hold tight to an individual because they were super talented and because in the early days they were they've had such a big input in the company because they were doing they were the ones that were doing i don't know technical um, security cio whatever this kind of roles and the, the company evolved to tens hundreds of people and that individual which was thriving in a very small startup -y, do do it all type of environment now was struggling but the founder keep kept them around and basically tried to motivate them financially to stay just because you know they see they were seeing them as a talented individual but didn't really realize that they don't fit in the ecosystem anymore yeah. um and, and that's really good thing and i i like what you said about roberto that he actually offered to pay uh pay you basically to have you on 
on um, part time while you figure out your your mm, path because sense. again you know you coming in when there were seven of you um, and then four years having tens of tens of um, individuals in the team and you know you're you didn't you wanted to go back to doing your stuff from scratch and working with a small team and building your own stuff and uh, you know that's completely understandable I'm 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 the same I think I'm I'm a better fit in a startup environment and thriving in the startup environment than a big company, mainly because I have a bigger um, value. I, 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 I have a bigger output hmm. when I need to handle multiple things hmm. and so on. And then the second, the second one was a bit more like, uh, I'm not, um, I'm not challenged here and I'm they not didn't think paid. of me. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. It was, it was too big of a company and yeah. they didn't really care. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. That, that, that's a, that's the word. They didn't care. They were like, are you living? Yeah. Bye bye. We got thousand people more. So, yeah. And then, so then I kind of know the, the history from here. You, uh, you left, you started, uh, running pixels. You finally, because you had the, the budget now to start the company, you hmm. finally got to do what you always dreamed of, which is build products, right? Um, how did you, how did you decide what you're going to build? Was this an experience thing where you seen a, a gap in the market while working for all of these companies that acquired you or was there something else? So, um, well, that time I knew, I know, I thought that uh, I knew that uh, uh, it was going to be successful in a new company. So I call Javi, Javier, uh, one of my partners, and and say, hey, uh, I'm going to build this company. It's going to be great. We're going to be successful. Up to you. You want to come with me? They were like, it's going to be successful. I say, sure. Yeah. Because I got these rules and yeah, we fit in that uh, yeah. uh, description of uh, going to be successful. And we started to have meetings with ideas and we decide which one was going to be our first product. We had several ideas and that's what had one was one of those ideas that we thought could be interesting for uh many type of customers, small and big customers. There was an initiative in Atlassian, Atlas Board. Uh, it was many years ago to create dashboards and it was super successful internally in Atlassian. But you had to create your own gadgets by implementing uh, like a new node uh, mm -hmm. module. So you needed to be a developer to create a new metric for the dashboard. And we thought, oh, that's really difficult. No, you cannot extend that. So um, we did in a way that it was and is easy to anyone to create these metrics. And, but we had many other ideas. We had a list of ideas and we discussed all them, pros, cons, uh, why this is going to be successful, why this is a terrible idea. And it took us a, a while to decide, but then we developed it really quick because, right. yeah, we got this kind of lean uh, a startup a way of developing apps. Uh, we strip everything. Mm -hmm. This is the bare minimum that has value. And we were experts in creating apps for the marketplace. Let me, let me go back a bit because mm. you mentioned, and I want to figure out if this was what, what you're referring to. You mentioned that when you call Javier, you, you said, this is going to be successful. I have the blueprint on how to make this successful. What did you mean by that? Um, successful in what? In su successful in how you execute building or successful in in growing and generating revenue? What were you referring no, to? No, it's something more... Um, well, later I'm going to talk about... Uh, we got an investment company, a small investment company, mm -hmm. and I got my own rules to invest. And one yeah. rule was that if there is a founder that is not super young, like me, mm -hmm. um, I'm 40 right now. I I'm young, but I'm not 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can fail many times in theory, not always in theory. And we had money. We didn't need to do something on a RAS. We had money to stay one year working in a product. So mm -hmm. that was, was one thing. I had worked for in, in the Atlassian ecosystem for many years. So I knew the, the ecosystem we were going to, and also Javi and, and Inigo. Uh, so there were many ingredients. 
and and we knew how to develop an app technically and how to launch to the market. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, this is going to be successful. No, because uh, so I, I really believed in that right. that uh, we are going to be successful. So basically, your your main ingredients that made you confident that you're going to be successful was the fact that you had financial leeway, runway, um, financial runway in order to be able to sustain yourself and your co-founder for a year to develop this. Mm. So you knew that you don't need to jump into um, services mm. to keep yourself alive, which is it is it fair to say that that's one of the things that in the past companies kept you from actually building a product business. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. in Manfred at the beginning and then in Kenobi. Yeah. And then the second one is the talent. So you worked with um, uh, Javier before. Yeah. Uh, you you guys knew each other. You worked really well together. And then the third one is you you knew the ecosystem. Javier and, and Inigo also. Hmm? And Inigo. Yeah. Inigo also, the three of us. Oh right, the yeah. two of you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you had you had your dream team together, yeah. and then the third one was you knew what you were doing because you knew the ecosystem and you mm -hmm. knew how mm -hmm. to build up. So these were the three ingredients mm -hmm. for financial mm -hmm. team and knowledge and experience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. With that, those ingredients, it can go wrong. It can, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's uh, it's interesting that you called them and be like, dude, yeah. I know how to make this successful. And they were <laughs> like, the blueprint. really? And I said, yes. It's like, like okay, let's try. I think that confidence, uh, that confidence at, at times is is good. It can it can go both ways. Conf confidence or being overly confident in something can be detrimental because it can cause a lot of challenges along the way if you're too cocky and too um, you know, I know everything, so it's, it's my way. And so more on. than confident, I'm super optimistic. <laughs> yeah, or optimistic. Let's yeah. say optimistic, <laughs> right? It, um, it can go bad at times because it can make you miscalculate things because you have that optimistic view mm. on 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 stuff. And I know that I, I sometimes do that. And Nikki needs to pull me back and say, "But hold on, let's analyze this." I'm like, no, 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 it's, it's gonna be great. The, the same with uh, with Javier and Inigo. They try. They they kind of balance. My yeah. optimistic, your optimistic uh, yeah. side, but it can also help you a lot because you know you have the the confidence, you have the dare to take steps that maybe you didn't like. For example, your first step, which could have been potentially more profitable or more um, beneficial for you if you would have gone with the business idea that you said that you still today think it would would have been yeah. a great idea. Because at the end of the day, anyways, you run out of money. You run out of money with the yeah. with the simpler idea as well. If you had the confidence back then, maybe you could, would have taken yeah. the other step yeah. and built a you know a, a more valuable product and a product company from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. And it was the early days of the marketplace. You see, I'm gonna say most of the apps that were launched and still are live, they are making a lot of money. All of them. Yeah, because of this traction that they got at the beginning of uh, yeah, 2014, 13, 12. Yeah. I think it's important to, you know, there's there's two side of, sides of this with the with the marketplace and being part of a marketplace in the early days, because, yes, over time, you're becoming because you were there from the beginning, you're becoming a more preeminent application. You have to also play your Hmm. your steps right hmm. in order to do that right yeah. not every single application that was there from the beginning is still there no no, no that's but true. the ones that that had potential are now big players in the ecosystem in the marketplace um and people say oh well yeah be, you know you had it easier than um us noobs today because you were there from the beginning so you just had to tag along hmm. for the growth of the ecosystem where me a, a new entry in the marketplace, I need to fight my way in order to, um, and do a lot of growth hacking and a lot of tactics in order to become popular hmm. amongst all of these already popular applications. But I would argue that that's not the same. Like in the early days, you had different challenges to grow a business like hmm. this when there wasn't enough uh, attention and enough uh, 
desire and interest hmm. in applications or knowledge that and the market was way so, smaller than now yeah exactly and so you so you had a different struggles yeah. like you have today um so i think it's unfair you know it's some people saying you know i mean these usually people that uh, founders that start new companies in the ecosystem that look at the all the the you know the more established and older one that say oh well, but you you were there at the beginning no, no but i think we had to distinguish uh the apps that are now that they started then yeah and the apps that were there and they disappear yeah there exactly. are many of those the ones that still remain if you look at the usually founders and the initial team they are amazing either engineers or uh, uh leaders they are really good people there uh super oh, yeah. smart people so yeah you know, it's not the market was smaller but if you were there is to be in the right moment but be prepared and be really good yeah. at what you are doing and the Ta ideas were diagramming or workflows or mm. that uh, are still the top uh products right yeah i think talent is still talent uh, i think you can't really do anything without talent uh, whether you start with a with a marketplace and an ecosystem early on or later on as well so you've had three exits exits so far hmm. all in the atlassian ecosystem uh oh no the recruiting oh no with, uh, except, except for the for that one so you had two in the ecosystem you had a break from the ecosystem for that recruiting yeah one uh, one year something uh, a bit more one and a half years something like that yeah yeah and so i'm i'm curious you started this in your journey in 2014 it is now seven years later uh no nine so, we're in 2023 almost yeah, nine, 10 years yes nine but i started uh 2013 because i started to yeah. research how to create a company everything mm -hmm. and this entrepreneurship program and Fast forward 10 years. So you're you're uh, around 10 years hmm. since you started your entrepreneurship journey. Um, tell me, what was the hardest moment in time for you as an entrepreneur where you really doubted yourself? I know, I know which one was mine, which is quite recent, actually. I'm curious for you, what was the, is there any significant moment in time when you said, that was the hardest bit ever. Um, I got several. Kenobi, my first company, I struggled most of the year because I had to pay salary and every week I was checking the bank account because mm -hmm. I didn't have the money, checking when we were going to get the services that month. So mm -hmm. it was hard times. Um, I had help. I remember my grandma gave me money. My parents gave me money. So, uh, so they, they, they helped you with the first business. Yeah. 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 Uh, if I, if they didn't give me that money, I couldn't make it, make it. Yeah. They, they don't, they are not wealthy people, but they yeah. gave me what they could. And the same, my grandma. And that was like, uh, my, my life, uh, both my safe, how do you say, um, they, they throw me like, a um, safety net. Yeah. In, and how did that happen? Sorry to um, to jump on this, but was it was it something that came natural, or was it a bit awkward of a situation for you to ask no, no, money no, from your family? No, or is I, that I something didn't ask. Normal? I didn't ask. I oh. didn't want to ask. Oh, really? Yeah, I was trying to do everything on my hand to to avoid asking them for money, and they said, "No, we want to give you money because." So my parents, when I finished the degree, oh, you are going to find a, a nice job and everything. It's like, no, I'm going to go with this grant and I'm going to go to Edinburgh. It's like, okay, okay, good luck. Uh, we support you. But they were like, oh, okay, he's an engineer. Why don't, but, okay. And then I came back and I was going to do the, the, the PhD and they were super happy. When I finished, I had several job offers. Uh, I had one to go to the... Uh, a university was in Belgium, I don't remember, uh, another uh, offer in the States. So I had different, and I was like, no, I'm going to create my company. And they were like, okay, we support you, but why don't you try and go to work for a few years to this university or to the States? And I was like, no, I'm going to create my company. They were like, okay, uh, we support you, but uh, okay. Uh, and they were like, 
take this money. And it's like, no, 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 take the money. I say, okay, I need it. Uh, do you think there were, do you think in the, in their mind, deep down inside, they were worried? They were, or yeah, a lot, like a lot. They were like, they, they, my mom always said, uh, you know, you can come, come back home any day. Mm -hmm. You got a room, you got food and like, okay, thank you, mom. It's like, yeah, yeah okay. I, Maybe I know I'm you're worried need... <laughs> about me and then stuff, but I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were worried. Um, mm -hmm. And they saw also like a big opportunity. Uh, the States job, they were like, oh, that's too far. But they, in Europe, they were like, when do you go to that university and start working? But they didn't want to work in the university. I had, um, oh, I, I did uh, the the thesis in a research group and from time to time I had to do master classes and everything. I didn't really enjoy that. Um, it was like not going deep into problems, just, yeah, swallow uh, concepts, not swallow, there are some advanced things, but I didn't want, I, I want real problems from uh, real customers. And mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah, they, they were worried, they were worried. But uh, yeah, they gave me the money and they say, oh, we support whatever you are going to do. So, yeah. Were you, are you, were you able to openly talk to them? So for example, when you'd go home, back home, you know, family reunion, whatever, for holidays and so on, would you openly talk about your challenges with, with your company or would you, did you keep that away a bit? No, I usually um, just told them about the good things. Oh, we got a new contract with this huge company mm -hmm. in a uh, well, uh, company that we got services and we are going to do this job and they are going to pay pay us uh, this money. And well, but they didn't say, I'm struggling, I'm discussing with the bank and uh, I'm getting yeah. uh, a small loan to get until they pay us uh, these services. Uh, no, I didn't want to worry them, but um, it was not, uh, it was like a, not lies, but uh, a different truth uh, until... Yeah. yeah, just hiding some, some yeah, of the yeah, negative yeah. So, bits. Yeah, and, and then it came pretty quick, the, the conversations to uh, the first acquisition. So, and they were kind of happy because I had to travel, the company paid me all uh, the trips to discuss the, mm -hmm. the conditions and everything. So they were like, oh, this is something, this is something. Maybe uh, he's doing something that is going to move him to the next level, right? Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm curious now, did you, did you pay your, your family back? Yes. You did? Well, I, I didn't pay back, like, uh, here's, the, here's the money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I gave them money. Mm -hmm. when uh yeah 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 and they were happy did, did they do you feel like they, 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 they didn't want it they didn't want it they didn't want it no they were like enjoy the money i was like i'm enjoying the money mm -hmm. and this money is for you to enjoy so we all enjoy the money when, when you when you exited um and you know they how did they feel about about your successes there I'm, I'm sure the parents and they're they were happy about it super happy super proud and yeah and we had always celebrated in in restaurants that uh, they couldn't go if it wasn't for these situations. Mm -hmm. And I also enjoy going to, for example, I remember once, I don't know, you know, um, the Chavarri is, uh, it's been one of the best restaurants in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went there and it was awesome. <laughs> and they were like, wow. Yeah. So, so yeah. And you felt very proud yeah, to, yeah. to have that moment. Try this, try that. Uh, this wine is amazing and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically when, it, when going back to, to what you mentioned, one of the toughest moments for you was that financial uncertainty that you had in the very early days of your first venture. Hmm. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's, that's one time. There are more, uh, for example, when I had to leave Comalatec, mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't... I didn't have my mind really well. I was like uh, thinking about I'm not happy with my work. I'm not happy in life. So that was uh, a hard moment. And and then there is another moment. I didn't talk. I got other company and that I'm trying to get out right now. And with this company, I had I, I, I'm having tough moments because I really want to leave it. My partner doesn't want it. Uh, we, I want to close it. Uh, yeah. And he doesn't want it. He wants to um, keep on 
struggling. We are struggling with this company. It has nothing to do with software. It's related with uh, medicinal cannabis. We got a seed bank and everything. And uh, yeah, uh, I was a, that was a big mistake I made. Uh, when I started did you this open company. This one? Um, I started this company 2019. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, he told me he's a friend mm -hmm. that is really good friend, but as partner, we are not aligned at all. Not compatible, no, which, is no, no. which is completely fine. And fundamentally, I think that's what people need to understand that if, you, if you're very compatible as human beings and friends and so on, it doesn't really make you automatically good no, business partners. No, no, no. This is a really good example. Uh, terrible. We, we are, both of us are suffering. Uh, when we had to talk about the company, it's like uh, we even uh, I even get like uh, pain in my stomach, mm -hmm. stomach, and yeah, and I really that was a big mistake. So everything is not uh, like success and exits and everything. Yeah, yeah. So mm, this company that's uh, one of the yeah probably the, I don't know the biggest mistake probably the biggest mistake I, I've done creating companies to create this company. Yeah. And so you've had quite a few companies so far. You've you've started quite a few things. Yeah. And now you've been you've been acquired. So Ronin Pixels, your um your company with your um basically reporting and analytics application in the Atlassian. I mean it's not just Atlassian because you can plug in and it's a standalone tool. Uh, as well. Not yet, but uh we are um in Monday, also in the Monday ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I know that your plan was always to to kind of like have it integrate with multiple sources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. That was from the very beginning. Yeah. So you, you've had several exits, um, some more successful than than others, um, several companies, and now you've been working for Affire, the company that acquired you for how long now? Two years. Been, two years. It's been already two years. Two years in August. Because I remember, I remember when you reached out to me and. Uh, we're looking for advice for whether, you know, whether to get investment here, whether to take, get funding from there and so on. We had a couple of conversations and that was before. So it's been two years already. <laughs> God yeah. damn it. Um, it's a funny story how it started because I mentioned we started the company. We um, we discussed having you and me, hey, we got enough money for at least a year, probably more, but at least a year. So we don't need investment. We don't need uh, to try to sell the company. We w we wanted uh, a business for many years. So mm -hmm. we, that was our idea. And we launched the product like in three months, something like that, super quick, because we, we really wanted to make the most of that year. Mm -hmm. And after, well, after a month, I started to talk to Randall. But you know how I met Randall? Uh, I, I don't know the story. Uh, uh, jet lag affects me like a lot. When I go to the States, mm. uh, I wake up every day for a week, like at four in the morning, something like that. Mm. And um, and I, I went to, when I was there, to the gym uh, early in the morning. But the gym opened a bit later. And every morning I was there waiting. And there was this guy also waiting with me. And we started to talk. And he he did the treadmill, and I was doing I don't know dumbbells or something, and talking. And one day I saw him because we were in the Atlassian summit, within the because we were in the hotel, and then in the summit I was like, oh, you are in in the ecosystem, and he was like, yes, I'm the, in the ecosystem, <laughs> and and what do you do? Oh, uh, I got uh, this company, a fire. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so you are yeah, and that's how I met him. And we kept discussing every time we saw each other. He always was interested in what we were doing in Comalatec. I was in Comalatec mm -hmm. at that time. And he was always super uh, close and super interested in what I was doing and giving me advice and this and that. Uh, super nice. And he's still the same. Yeah, he's the greatest person. And when I created uh, Rolling Pixels, uh, one day I started to talk to him. And he was like, oh, Gorka, you had to count with us and I was like, well, not yet because uh, our product has one month in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. We just sold our first license, $100, and let's wait a year and we talk in a year. He was like, uh, no, 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 let's keep on talking. I was like, sorry, Randall, we are not gonna sell right now because uh, okay. we don't need it. We, we don't have anything to negotiate, and but we are looking for investment. 
Why? Because we had money for staying 12 months, but we saw uh, our competitors that were investing a lot of money in mm -hmm. marketing and in, in content creation and everything. And we didn't have the resources for doing that. We had the resources to stay, the three of us, working a year. Yeah. And uh, we were like, hmm, maybe we look for uh, investment. And we had, uh, we we were in the Atlassian Ventures discussing. Mm -hmm. and we, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, we had you're a, asking me about it. Yeah, we had the green light. We were uh, about to get it. And also we, we discussed with several companies. And I told Randall, hey, we are looking for investment. And we had more conversations and he was like, no, we are not going to invest. We want to acquire the company. And that was a story. At the end, we said, okay, um, we love the project. Of course, everyone is going to think, oh, the money. Yes, money is important. First thing, yeah. But uh, it's not the only thing because we had other opportunities and we said, mm, no. Uh, challenge, you have to be motivated. Yeah. And culture, for me, is basic. And their values, I talked to Matt and to Randall, and their values were as our values. Mm -hmm. We uh, we share many of uh, the fire values, and we had those values similar, different written in in our uh, core uh, description of the company, right? It, it does feel like, because ours as well, so the Jigsaw values were, uh, you know, it, it kind of like written different but it interlocked with some of the values that that fire had mm. so it's it's funny how that that works it does also feel like you had experience with a couple of acquisitions you had experience with embedding with other teams and you knew at least it feels to me that you knew what you wanted from from a company um when it comes to acquisition you mm. knew like I, I want the team that i work in to be like this i want my role to be like that and so on yeah yeah Kind of, I had the ideas clear, but uh, when Randall came with this project, I was like, oh, I wanted to do my project, mm -hmm. but I love your project. It, yeah. And it's huge. It's way bigger than my project, that my idea, my vision. Uh, and we wanted to be part of that. And today's the day that after two years, we think and we have discussed that is the best decision we we could have uh, or we took. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the that's that seems that sounds like a like a dream setup in a sense but i want to dig a bit deeper because that's what i do on this show and because it's I, I see a pattern here every single time you created a business you had it sold in a matter of seconds right none of your businesses have had basically a uh, significant growth and lengthy uh, journeys and increasing in teams and sizes and that, you know, that growth and that scaling up hmm. um, type of setup. So that's been your pattern. A year, Max, what, what was the le the, the longest um, business that you had? A year and, a, and something, was it? Yeah. 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 Okay. At this time, do you feel that any of these businesses should have gone longer before getting acquired was there any of these that you that you think well actually i could have pursued longer this hmm. thing and um and do something about it yeah uh both kenobi as i mentioned one of the apps is still making money is making a good money mm -hmm. and there was the app probably is the only app that has still my code on it <laughs> yeah and that's making money and it's in maintenance mode mm -hmm. since uh, it was acquired. So that right. that had a lot of potential. In Ma Manfred, the technical recruiting company, now is very big. Is uh, well, the revenue is public, and they are making a lot of money. You can I can mm -hmm. show you later. Um, and I knew it was we were just growing every single month, like uh, with uh, double numbers. So and it's still growing. So yes, but we needed that push, uh, that investment, at least an investment. M probably we didn't need to sell it, mm -hmm. but we, we needed investment. You need a financial yeah. Uh, yeah. support mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I, I get that. I think that's what, that's what happens often 
is acquisitions happen because someone can't financially um, support the business. Did you feel that your lack of resources as the motive of getting acquired has impacted the deal that you got with any of these? As in, or was that never part of the conversation in your acquisition? Was it more, well, these are talented people, this, these are good products and we're going to go for it? Um, or did you also put on the table, we're selling also because we're running out of cash, not just because we like you? Uh, with the first acquisition, the you are running out of cash mm -hmm. was on the table in KNOV. Right, with yeah. Uh, Komala. Yeah, because right. I told him, hey, I'm running out of money. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the opportunity to sign. He was like, okay, let's talk. Right. Uh, there, yes. In, in Manfred, no, we had money. We right. had plenty of money. In, and in running pixels, we, well, uh, we didn't need to sell. I was, I was super comfy in that sense because mm -hmm. we didn't want to sell. Yeah. We, we, didn't, we didn't need money for... Well, for we staying needed, afloat. You needed money for marketing, basically. Yeah, That's yeah, what you're yeah, saying. For growth. Right. Yeah. So we were kind of confident in the negotiations because we were like, either there is a, a really good offer or we keep on working like this and we are going to offer investment from Atlassian and from another company. We were about to, to get that money from Atlassian Ventures. Yeah. That uh, we had to tell them, hey, we don't, we don't want that so money. So you're... you're you were more attracted to the Afire proposition than continuing continuing on your own with um, seed investment from yeah. Atlassian. Yeah, yeah. We put all the scenarios, mm -hmm. and we decided, hey, what do we do? We get this money. We had two hundred and fifty thousand from Atlassian Ventures, and the same from another company. And with that money, the money we had, we could have done it. But uh, it was, it was a bet. What if another pandemic? What if another mm -hmm. thing? What uh, another crisis? And in the other side was, hey, we are gonna be covered financially, and we can work on the product that we uh, have a vision for. We yeah. we had a vision that still we are going that way. And for me, it was the for for us the paradise product paradise. Uh, you get things where you can have security, uh, growth. Uh, and you can focus on product. You can focus on engineering. Um, so a fire for us is the paradise for, for working in that sense, right? Because we like to build a product and right. yeah, and be, that reality to become, that vision to become a, a reality. So do you, do you see yourself more as a product manager than an entrepreneur then? Because um, it kind of sounds like you were more excited to continue to develop this product and double down on that versus basically making a business work? Um, right now, I think I'm a bit tired of uh, struggling creating uh, companies. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I want to keep on learning and becoming a better uh, product professional. Person. Yeah, yeah, because I'm learning a lot right now, and I enjoy learning uh, about many things, mm -hmm. but um, not just in professional side, also outside. And I don't know what I'm gonna do in the future. Right now, that's my objective. Even if I sold companies, like in one year, my objectives are usually at least five years. For example, I did my degree, my PhD, five years, five mm -hmm. years. Then um, when I created my first company, it was one and a half years plus four years Komala. In, in Komala, five mm -hmm. years, five something. So that's, I think you at least need for a big project, a big goal, at least five years, because it takes time to yeah. do good things, right? And also, it, I suppose Affire is the biggest company that you work for. Ex we can exclude that tiny time yeah. at the yeah. other company because you let Yeah, I was just a few months there. Yeah. So how, how is it, how, how do you find working with, with a big company like this? What are the things that are most interesting to you to learn? Because it sounds like, like yourself, like, like myself, you're in a period where 
I want to learn, I want to grow. But you didn't hang your your entrepreneur hat hmm. completely off. I'm sure that you, there's a future where you're interested in pursuing um, a venture um, as well. I suppose, right? Or uh, did you did you completely retire from entrepreneurship? N- not not completely, but uh, I want to stay a few years, yeah. like uh, preparing maybe for the future. So what uh, what are you? what are the things that you feel like you're going to take away or you're already taking away from Affire that could prepare you for your entrepreneurship f- future? Um, well, in the product side, it's the first time I work with other product managers. In Comalatec, right. we hire one product manager to help me. Yeah, But I, I have never had the opportunity to work with others and learn from others. Mm-hmm. I also have done uh, proper training in, in product management. And now, for example, we are working with a growth team that is amazing. We get really good growth team. And I'm learning like a lot. And that's going to prepare me for everything. And the entrepreneurship had, yeah, I, I still have it, but um, I'm also using that for new projects internally mm-hmm. or for new challenges. And also to how we work in some things we got is similar to how we worked previously. Like, uh, okay, we got this, le- we, we are super quick developing new features, releasing, uh, moving around. Of course, there are things that take time that, um, I don't know, uh, security things or performance or that uh, require other teams. That's different, but uh, still we are learning a lot. We are preparing for um, very big customers. We are preparing... Um, I'm learning also I don't know, from the channel managers, from pre-sales, from, um, from product marketing. Yeah. Uh, first time I, I work with product marketing managers uh, in my life. And so there are a lot of things that are new. And you, you've seen the product managers we got. We got really good product managers. Yeah. So I'm learning a lot from, from, many, from many people. That's actually good because um, it gives you the, the context of of a lot of depth in in an organization and i feel from your stories that what has been missing from your journeys as as um, a founder and building businesses has been that that second layer of scaling up hmm. teams and so on it does sound like you've had a few team members with every single company that right. you started very flat very simple structure and that when you when you try to take a company at the next level you need some of that um, context and some of that um, structure knowledge of how to how to make things happen from a, from a product team perspective from a marketing team perspective and so on you have that even though let's say you you might not be working very uh, deeply with the product marketing team, you're collaborating with them and so on, and you know, kind of know with what each product marketer mm. does and team members and so on. So I feel that that's going to be very beneficial for your future. Mm. It has been for me coming from, a, you know, working with a company in London, um, from being their first employee to 160 people and seeing that company grow. I think it gave me a lot more again, context and a lot more knowledge of what it means hmm. to have a company of that size and the growing pains and also the, the structures that you need to put in place from a from a growth perspective, from performance perspective and all of these things. Hmm. I tried at Jigsaw to keep structures as flat as possible and not have a lot of management and a lot of hmm. complexities, uh, which I think we've achieve pretty much there was only 12 of us so we could do that but i was aware that come the 20 number and and higher like 20 you really need to start putting some structure in place 50 again 100 and so on it it becomes more and you need to evolve your work practices structures management and training mentorship and so on with every single phase, milestone of the company's growth. Yeah. 
is that something that how do you feel about that how do you feel about growing a bigger company that requires you to think of the people side a lot more than the product now that you mention it um i realize that's the case because um i'm the principal product manager for uh, the VA reporting category in Fire. we got 25 26 products mm -hmm. with um top products we got like eight top products in the marketplace and the team is really big uh we got different teams and now that i think it's the first time i work with uh this big team and i have to handle products for uh, the all the engineers and the product marketing how we work um in a fire in the triad and i didn't realize but i'm learning a lot how to uh, handle teams, how to manage uh, all the intrins intrinsic is that uh, we got, um, how to organize these teams, all the roadmap objectives, um, OKRs, uh, everything we, we have to handle, the whole market, all the competitors we got, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, it's, it's like in another level. Yeah, My category is like, well, it's bigger than most of the companies in the marketplace. So uh, in a sense, that's probably one of the the biggest learnings I'm, I'm getting, right? And Handle is that this something huge portfolio? Is that something that is um, interesting to you? Is it something that you enjoy? Because I know people that really love figuring out standards, processes for how they develop products, but not that interested in the operations side of it. Like, because you're learning a lot of the operation, structural, team communication and all of these things that happen with when you have a bigger team hmm. how's that for is that something that you're super keen on or you you're you're more like I'm a product person I want to focus and I'm uh, and I'm and I'm uh, obsessed about product so um, I think you need to learn everything and to learn in order to learn everything you need to do it I know people don't like but um, if you want to be good, you need to do it and then uh, learn. And then you can move back if you want just to handle a single product. It's really difficult to have several products. Mm -hmm. And it's way easier to focus on a single product. Yeah, That's, uh, that's it. But uh, I think you need to do both to learn and then to extract ideas that you can apply to a single product and then build that single product. So, yeah, the day-to-day -day operations or going to processes and management, I think you have to do everything. I see people that, no, I just want to handle everything from here. You give me a report and I'm, I don't know, uh, I'm not going to say a role uh, to not offend anyone. But um, you need to do everything. I think the product manager role is difficult and stressful because many people depend on your outcomes a lot and that's stressful you need to work yeah. with support with pro marketing with engineers with pre-sales with channel with you need to work on pricing objectives and uh, there are a lot of moving parts and i think it's way easier to focus on a single thing you are going to be better and everything but uh that i think is going to prepare you it's like uh, being an entrepreneur you have yeah, to do exactly. many things mm -hmm. it's like being a pro manager right Probably is that what I like. It is true that some days, because you are not motivated every day, uh, but you have to be constant. Many days I think oh, I would like to go back to develop mm -hmm. and just have something to develop uh, and have all these challenges focus on a single piece of product or something, right? And not thinking about thousand things, thousand meetings. and But then I'm again next day happy and I say, okay, let's do it. Uh, but sometimes, yes. Um, and that's why for now, I don't want to start anything else in, in a new business or something because it's tiring, mentally tiring. Yeah. Right. But I'm going to put you in a very um, tough, challenging um, situation just now with, um, with for, for you to think about. So you've had all of this experience with building businesses from scratch and getting them to, I would say, keeping them at an early stage and, um, and selling, you're having the experience of working with the 
bigger company, bigger team now. You've been there for two years. I want to ask you, if you were to start a company today, how would you start it? Because I'll, I'll, give, I'll tell you why I'm asking this question. I actually had a conversation, I uh, had a debate with Nikki recently because I said that when I'm going to start my next company, I'm going to do it completely different. Uh, that I feel that I've learned a lot of what it takes to build um, a, a, a company in a sense. And also I'm at an age and a stage in my life where I don't want to hack things and spend days and nights working uh, super hard, twice as hard uh, because it is me that does most of the things and that I want to um, start my next business, maybe know who to hire from the beginning and get the resources to hire and start the business in, so, in such a way. While Nikki argued that because of my ADD and because of my obsession towards certain things, I'm still going to be spending um, nights and, and doing a lot of things myself because I'm a hands-on person. Now, I don't know what the reality is and what you're probably gonna do that <laughs> what's gonna maybe i don't know but i wanna i wanna believe that maybe i'm at an age um in my life mid this middle age where where i do things a bit more calculated and i don't have sleepless nights although i doubt it because even with the misfit founders i have sleepless nights now doing stuff but i want to hear from you like knowing what you know today being a successful exited founder multi-exits working for this company now, Alphire, um, how would you start a business? If you had to start a business tomorrow, let's say. Um, Leaving aside the fact that you don't want to start a tomorrow, but just if you would. Yeah. First part is, do I have the energy? I will ask myself mm -hmm. the energy, uh, a partner that is going to support that because it's super important to have someone that uh, listens to your whinings and cries uh, mm -hmm. during the dinner. So that's really important. Is this person going to support me or is going to um, is going to have issues with this or we are going to have a problem, right? Uh, yeah. Personal problem. Uh, then uh, choose partners because I did in the past on my own and it's really hard. I did with another partner who was, was my friend. And it didn't go well. So really important, choose your partners carefully. Money, uh, to have like uh, money, not just for staying alive, <laughs> but for properly invest. And, and then I don't know anything else because there are different types of uh, business. I don't know the domain, but you can try a business that makes you some money and you stay like with a, a nice salary and that's it. That is a kind of business I could think of. But for that, maybe I go to a company that is going to pay me well. And the other, um, I could think of a business that can, so that is going to be super challenging in terms of what we can get of uh, return. Mm -hmm. Not thinking of a small company, but thinking, can I do like a huge company? Huge company doesn't mean in terms of many people, but in terms of impact um, and revenue. And then thinking of the business, I will do something related with uh, giving back to the world, making a positive impact and not probably I couldn't do just software. If mm -hmm. I do software, it's software uh, that can be applied to something, I don't know. Uh, for the welfare of animals or, right. um, I don't know, environmental improvements, ocean protection. Yeah, Ecosystem. so that's positive impact type of business. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but the rest, I have no idea. So I know where I will go. I don't know. Uh, animals, I like cats, but any type of animal yeah. or something like that. Yeah, no, no, but that sounds like a, like a very good structure of you know i know from experience i how much energy i need to calculate that i want to put in this for balance you know work-life balance and all of that stuff i want to know 
how the, you know I'll, I'll figure out what type of um, founder co-founder i want to go with because i've had experience with a variety of characters uh, i want to make sure that i have money so you probably wind up doing a some sort of um, strategic runway plan to figure out well this is how much we're going to pay on salaries and so on this is how much we want to invest in in growth and marketing and so on and then i also know that my business needs to be something that is in positive impact hmm. um, category. Hmm. That seems like a very sane plan to start with, right? Hmm. Um, yeah, so good luck with starting your next company tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, tomorrow, no. We have to do something here in Brighton. Yes, yeah. Um, Are you thinking about the next business? Uh, am I thinking about the next business? Well, Right now, I'm focused on the positive impact thing that you mentioned. Um, I'm focused on misfit founders, apart from you know being part of the same company, Alphire, and focusing on on delivering value there. I'm also doing this entire misfit founders and initiative to help fo uh, founders, and I think that's going to be my future uh, in a sense. I I think I love giving back, and I'll try to to give back as much as I can while also sustaining myself. I think that's where I'm heading in mm -hmm. a sense. Um, I, you know, I've never thought about this, whether I want to do something big, you know, oh, I want to, I feel that I'm in, in such a good financial place and stable place right now that I don't have that attraction to, let's say, building a, billion dollars company like I used to dream when I was young and I was like yeah I'm gonna build this and so on. um I mentioned if I do it yeah not that I'm gonna try yeah. it but. yeah no definitely uh, yeah uh, I think that's where I'm heading 100 I think eventually um I will build a business whether again whether that's a significantly larger business that Jexo was I don't know I'm not sure that that should be my focus i'm not focused on money on revenue on financial growth i want to do a, i want to have a bigger impact hmm. that's all i know i want to have a bigger impact if that means i'm going to be able to support myself then be it i don't think i'm not the type of person that needs more wealth hmm. like that i need oh i got this many millions i need 10 times, 100 times more, like some founders do, right? Mm. There's some founders that have an exit and then they set their vision on 10x or 100x mm. the exit that they had. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm not the kind of person. Like, I, I need to feel mm. that I'm having an impact. That's very important to me. And that's what keeps me awake at night, in a sense, of doing stuff. There is one sentence that Roberto told me once, and uh, I loved it is that never try to be happier because you are going to be always miserable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and that's the idea is mm. no, I want more. I want, more. you are going to be always a sad person and yeah. miserable. Uh, are you happy? Then stay that way because you are happy. That's the, what we are looking for, right? Uh, to, to be happy. And I've seen, um, like two main aptitudes in people, founders, and but also people that are not founders, but um, one that is, you can be grateful or resentful. Yeah. Maybe many people are resentful and try to trying to be happier uh, and stepping on others, right? And I don't know. I think that's sad. And right now, I'm happy. I don't need looking for. I don't need to look for something bigger. I'm happy. I'm learning. Uh, I got a good position, also financial position. So, um, yeah, why try to screw that, right? Yeah. And I completely agree. And, and I think that's what, that's what, the, and I do think that that is a character trait in a sense, a personality trait, because there are people that are constantly hungry. I can say that I'm constantly hungry but also satisfied with where, where, I, where I am. I, I recognize that. I can live in the moment. I can live today and appreciate today a lot. I'm hungry for 
doing more, doing better. Um, I'm hungry for helping more and having a bigger impact out there. And I think a lot of us are entrepreneurs are kind of like curious and hungry, mm. uh, hungry people. Now it depends on what you're hungry on. But because that's not bad. It's not being unhappy and looking for be happier. No, it's that you are. Yeah, like you, you want to challenge yourself, and you're happy that way. Yeah, being hungry, and and it it really depends on how you see things because if if you're a bit more, I don't want to say narrow-minded is a very negative word, but if you're like that, you you kind of structure and define happiness as, as this one thing. Right. And that's why a lot of people see financial wealth growth as happiness and challenge and so on. It's like, I need more of that. But deep down inside in a lot of us is that that's, that's not the focus. And, and once you, once you, you're able to realize that there are certain wants and desires that drive you emotionally and mentally, then you realize that it's most likely not paper, right? It's something else. It's the desire of creation. It's the desire of um, professional growth. It's the desire of helping others. Is is a mm -hmm. lot of these um, details that a lot of people, because of the narrow-minded approach, mm -hmm think that it's about the money and that that is the, the financial status is the way you show growth and, and and prosperity. No, prosperity can mean the fact that you live in a moment happy and that you feel fulfilled, right? Mm -hmm. You constantly feel fulfilled with the things that you do. And, you know, someone that's a product manager and is able to grow their skill set and their experience and experience more um, and be able to fulfill their needs by delivering the things that they're uh, that they're interested in has that fulfillment and that um, achievements uh, in a sense. I'm going off tangent here, but the point is that um, for me, going back to the business thing, um, when that time is going to come, I think I'm at a stage in my life where I don't need to worry about, you know, whether I have where to live or what to eat and so on. And I can focus on providing value to others. <laughs> that gives me the most satisfaction, the most joy. <clears throat> that, that point is important because uh, the happiness you feel uh, helping others is like more profound than your own happiness getting things. Yeah. And it can be like helping others to uh, fulfill their projects, like helping other founders and seeing their uh, like uh, being successful or going through their 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 desires or, or their um, goals. And that's one one thing. For example, uh, I'm helping this, uh, it, there is like a European project for women. They go to different countries and we go every quarter and to help them uh, with their projects. We listen to their pitches and we uh, discuss what they are looking for, how they can improve. And then when you see that something you said or help with, um, help them to achieve their dreams, their projects, something, it's like the, that happiness is even bigger, right? Yeah. Or I don't know if Nikki or your partner starts try to start another business and you help her. So the happiness you feel through her happiness is like more profound. And I think that uh, is uh, an achievement that, uh, I don't know, we could look for. Yeah. And look, the one thing that I would say is you can't... Um, you can't make others happy on an empty stomach, right? You'll be grumpy. <laughs> and that's the reality of it, right? Because, you know, as much as, as you know, we'll talk here and say that it's not about the, the financial, it's not about the money, it's not about these things, and it's 
the focus is and what gives me satisfaction right now is seeing others succeed and that gives fulfills my heart with joy that's true but fundamentally if i didn't have the means and the the, the financial well-being to be able to focus on this it will take away from it All right it would be significant because i would need to focus to 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 uh, spend part of my focus in making sure that i survive and that's you know that's what i've done before exiting before selling Jexo, I did had a couple of mentorship, mentoring a couple of people, you know, we've done the startup support group that we had in the um, Atlassian mm, right. world, but my input was very limited, mainly because I had to survive mm. and make a business work and the stress of that, because it was like, it, it's a high stake game in a sense. You're building a business. You're betting everything. You, yeah, you like I. I don't have any resources. I came into this country with a backpack. I've not had any wealth at all, and I've been building a business um, with no savings, nothing, living with rent and so on. So it's high stakes. If hmm. this fails, I need to go back to the drawing board from zero, from scratch, hmm. right? So. When that happens, I can't be ignorant and say it's all about, you know, giving back value and so on. Money doesn't count. Money does count when you're at that stage and you can't really mm. afford to do big financial fuck ups because then you're in a position where you can't help anyone else. You can't even help yourself and you need to figure out how you can help yourself before helping anyone else. So I am blessed that I'm in a situation where you know, helping myself is not a difficult task mm. anymore. And I can focus on providing more value here because I don't have the worries of how do I survive. Right. Um, no, we, we are so lucky of being in this position. Um, and we didn't mention, but uh, it comes here perfectly, uh, a fire town. How we are, um, well, a fire town, for those that don't know it, is the social the corporate social responsibility program here in Upfire. Yeah. And that is helping us to see how we can make an impact uh, to others. There are a lot of initiatives. And, and for me, it was like open my eyes in some of these initiatives. I went to Argentina, Chile. Of course, I combined with uh, uh, Atlassian community events and other software events once that uh, I was there, also in in Florida, we've been doing many things. And I think it's something, went back to a fire's culture, mm -hmm. that um, is like magical. For me, it's one of the best things that we got in, in a fire, uh, having the opportunity to contribute and giving back, that of course some of us were already doing that, but this is a, a way of doing within the company. And for me, that's uh, super important to open our eyes, right? And I'm curious, because you mentioned if you were to start a business, it would be a positive impact business. Mm -hmm. Is is the Affire Town initiative at uh, under Affire something that opened your eyes in that direction and helped you focus on that? Or or is it a different catalyst? Did you, did you always wanted to have a positive impact type of business, but hmm. you went for the you know, let's say more financial benefit type of business. What was the no, catalyst? I, I uh, always wanted to make a difference, mm -hmm. but uh, my idea was I want to make money and then I can help others. Right. Um, yeah, there is this um, quote, I think attributed to Henry Ford, that uh, I really like, which is a business that makes just money is a poor business. And... I read that many years ago and I said, mm -hmm. oh, I had to make a business that is not a poor business, not just making money, but uh, having an impact. And at the beginning in Kenobi, what I did is um, I had help from uh, local, um, uh, from the local government and it's some money that at the beginning is not a lot, but at the beginning super uh, is, is basic, right? To pay, I don't know, you had to uh, need an accountant for basic things or 
uh, but that money or for, I don't know, your first logo is not a huge amount, but it's key. And that's paid with the taxes of everyone. Yeah. And what I used to do is I help others uh, giving talks when they require, hey, Orca, can you give a talk about this and that? And say, oh, this is my way of giving back to the community, right? Of course, for free, uh, putting my, my time, uh, like you had to prepare everything. And I keep on doing that. But of course, when we had money with the Running Pixels acquisition, uh, it was not just our time. You put money. But creating a company with that objective in mind, I think is the next step. Mm-hmm. And at Firetown, um, kind of, I, I've seen some companies that are doing that. And I say, oh, this is possible. You can do that. It's going to be more difficult. It's going to be a bigger challenge. But um, yeah, probably was like a, you say, a catalyst, not uh, that I say, oh, I can do that. No, I already wanted to do that. But uh, maybe it's a way of, oh, maybe um, like Benevity, a platform for doing uh, donations and everything. Maybe there is business also. And uh, at the same time, uh, having a, a positive impact, right? Leaving the earth uh, better than we found it. Uh, before we close off, before we go to the closing state, I wanted to check whether you want to ask me. I've asked you so many questions and I dug into who is Gorka and what makes you tick. Um, I'm wondering, do you have anything for me? Do you want to ask me any questions? Or do you have any curiosities about uh, anything? You, you know, one question that um, is even in in one of the forms we got for candidates in, well, I, I don't know if they remove it, in okay. the recruiting company we had, and I always do that today, okay. is asking about pets, in even for doing recruiting. About? About pets. 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 Okay. Which um, one I know? You got Peanut and JJ, mm-hmm. uh, I always ask why, and you adopted them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I got also adopted cats, and I was foster home and everything, mm-hmm. and I was like to know because many people just buy a dog or they don't like dogs or animals in general uh why why you adopted them when in because it was not at the same time Mm -hmm. so what's the story of peanut and then yay yay did you have back home animals did you grow up with animals or it was nikki or it's a very interesting question actually because i've not I didn't grow up with with animals. I didn't have pets when I was growing up. I never actually had the desire or the interest that much for for pets. Uh, Nikki had pets before, but never your standard dogs and cats. She she had um, um, ferrets and other types type of type of pets. Um, she had like mouses and even I think. The snakes and stuff like that's the type of pets that I like that mouses. I, I I enjoy all animals, even like yeah. like rats. People like yeah, yeah. She she likes rats as well. Um, to, to be fair, they're very intelligent um, creatures. But I didn't, and I think the one thing that we realized very early on is it because it was just the two of us um, in our relationship and. In a business, right? We were we started Jexo, um, and we got Peanut at the beginning of um, sorry, at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. Um, this is before, just before the pandemic. So Peanut is not a pandemic dog, okay? Although pe- some people think that before it was before pre-pandemic. Yeah, pre-pandemic. But the reason why we got her was because one, we knew that we have a lot of affection to give, and we wanted to, you know give affection to another creature uh, apart from her and I, uh, in a sense, as a, as a uh, couple. And second, because I was training and I was going to the gym and, and so on, I, I knew that having a break, a mental break from uh, work is very important. And at that stage, we were working so much. We were working for a previous company that we were employed. We, we were working for our own business. So basically, work was a really big chunk of our time spent together. I had gym. Nikki was going to the gym at that point. So we had like an hour per day of just meditating and focusing outside work. But we knew that we needed 
to focus our attention somewhere else as well. And giving affection and caring for a creature and basically a dog was the answer to all of that. Yeah. And to be fair, you know, as as much as I love taking care of, of Peanut in the early days and um, just giving her a home and a, a comfortable life in a sense, I feel that I took so much out of having Peanut <laughs> around and just like in my darkest and and most stressful days to be able to get off of that disc and just go and play with Peanut is, <laughs> is, is done wonders to my mental health, to be honest. So, so I think that was it was it was selfish as much as it was, you know, well, we have we want to give more. We want to give affection and we want to care for for a creature. It was also selfish because we knew we we're going to get so <laughs> much more out of it. And then our second dog, JJ, which we got five months ago, four months ago, was because we were getting a bit saddened that that Peanut was all like alone, no. alone. and we, we we've seen her in the very early days how how much affection she has to give to humans, but also to other dogs, and how interested she is. And because we work, we wanted to fill her time rather than her sitting there and sleeping, sometimes miserable because we're working. Um, for her to have companion. Hmm. And that was the reason why why we got JJ. We wanted um, Pina to have a sister. Yeah, I always recommend at least two cats, two dogs, two something, so they can be together. Yeah. Because as you said, at the end, can be seen as something selfish because you need them. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, with my cats, I also, when I'm nervous or stressed, I, uh, there is a cat always around mm -hmm. and put my mind in a, peaceful state of mind, right? I can touch them also for sleeping, I sleep better and everything. Um, yeah, yeah, they are the best. So we can say that um, pets are a very big um, resource to have as a founder in, in, in your organization. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like pets are a, a cure in a sense. I, I would recommend every single founder to have uh, at least two cats, two dogs, two yes. something. Yeah. To, to mouses, me, I sorry. Um, okay, I don't know if that, hopefully that answered your question. Um, yeah. Yeah, is there anything else? Um, another thing I would say for founders is, uh, you said, doing an activity, a hobby out. Yeah. It can be a sport, it can be, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, um, dancing, it can be... <laughs> like you. <laughs> <laughs> like, like me. Uh, yeah, I, I do, I like... Um, grappling, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, wrestling. Um, although I don't like to fight like with competitors that mm -hmm. sometimes they, they like to, to have a, put out a fight. I prefer to treat everyone with respect. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's not that I don't like to fight. I like to fight, but in the tatami every week, mm -hmm. but not uh, with- uh, People tend to think that um, fighting, uh, doing a, a, a fight sport is, is an aggressive, type of thing and but it doesn't have to be I think there's a lot of people that that do it for their um, well-being and for the mental well-being physical well-being and some of the fighters that I met um, in the past have been the kindest people um, you know outside the gym not aggressive hmm. not hard-headed or anything like that that's usually the rule yes yes I will say yes we get a, a code of conduct or, or yeah because there is a lot of respect when you are in the tatami uh, mm -hmm. in the mats yeah uh, with other person always respect and you take that respect out and you have to because at the end of the day you're representing that sport and you know you have to have a certain uh, conduct mm -hmm. you have certain you gain certain skills and certain knowledge around you know fighting and you know contact and mm -hmm. things like that and you need to use it wisely on the mat, not, you know, in your, your take advantage part. of it or uh, misuse it um, outside of outside of the the gym. And I think that's why you do have to have a code of conduct outside hmm. the the mat as well. Yeah, yeah. Our values uh, in in that fire, uh, we apply them not just internally but uh, outside. The first is be human. 
Uh, so yeah. yeah, it's like having uh, the Bushido, no, uh, the way of the warrior or uh, Chalvary, Europe. So it's a code of conduct of just being a better person. Yeah. And you're also into, uh, I would say that you're into Japanese culture. Given the names of your companies, yes, yes, <laughs> I don't know. Are you? Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I, I like the the Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not an expert in Japanese culture, but uh, I really like it. And I've been once in Japan. I hope to go back soon because I want to go there again. And yeah, all my names have something related with uh, the Japanese culture, Japanese words. Uh, yeah. Uh, K Nobi was K and Nobi, like a system that stretches or, or grows. Um, then the cannabis one is Taima Tin. Taima is weed in, in mm. Japanese. Uh, running, uh, running pixels. Uh, running was a, a warrior that, uh, for some reason, uh, doesn't have a, 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 a master anymore. Can be because he's dead or in, in the fight or something. Um, yeah, everything. Yeah, I Even your tattoos look Asian. Yeah, they, they style. are Asian style. Yeah, they are. <laughs> okay. And I got my ta my cat tattoo. Yeah, I feel that you might uh, eventually move to Japan and be like, okay, now I now I live here. I, I love this culture so much. Um, I like the culture, but uh, I really enjoy being close to my family, my friends. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so before closing off, I have this ritual. Um, I, I'll ask you three questions. Um. One is, or the first one being, what is a quote that you live by? You told me a quote earlier, hmm, hmm, hmm. but is that the one or do you have a quote that is very symbolic to you? Um, I will say that one, since we are talking about a business, mm -hmm. a business that makes nothing but money is a poor business. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I will say that one. Yeah. That's, that, that's very deep. And I think that's with my career as a founder and entrepreneur. I am at that stage, but I feel that so many times um, with so many other businesses in my early 20s, it was around about making money. And this is one of the things that I also want people to realize that you evolve as an individual. And if you're in your early 20s and the one thing that you can focus on is financial benefit because yes. you come from out of it, that's perfectly fine. That doesn't mean that that is your future and that doesn't mean that you should be feeling guilty for wanting financial stability and that that's the reason why you build the business. And I see so many people when I, when I talk to people, when they pitch me their businesses as an investor, when I ask this question around what is your goal, what's your purpose, your personal goal with this business and people kind of hesitate to to say anything about the financial part of it. And they try to think deep about very deep meanings and so on. It's like, no, like you're, if you're in your early years or even later, if, if you, there's something that you miss, which is financial benefit and you're starting a business to get yourself better first, that's perfectly that's fine. fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't want anyone to feel guilty. The fact that they're building businesses, but, you evolve like I've evolved to a point where yes, a, a business, um, it for me is not a business if it's just financial and it mm -hmm. doesn't have any meaning. Um, so yeah, that's really good. Second question: What's a book that changed your life? That Be it changed, per, per, yeah, th that uh, changed or impacted your life. We can say impacted as well. It can be personal life or professional life. Um, probably from Nassim Taleb. Uh, Black Swan, mm -hmm. uh, although I found it kind of difficult to read, okay. but the idea of uh, how luck and the Black Swan's impact, um, it like that opens your eyes. It's like, okay, it's not everything that I had to be prepared and I had to be really good and do everything right is that... Um, can be situations that uh, are gonna change everything, so be protected for those. Um, uh, but uh, they got he's got several books that uh, talk about luck and the black swans and and yeah, that uh, kind of okay. Maybe 
I'm not 100% sure of this that I'm going to do in my business. Mm -hmm. Maybe something wrong can uh, happen and I have to be prepared. Yeah. So the, did that book uh, help you with realizing well, that the, there's... He's got Full by Randomness, yeah. Black Swan. Uh, he's got several ones. Huh. The, did that help with realizing that is not just about your skills or your preparedness that it's sometimes it's luck and it's just being in the right place at the right time because i feel that's one of the things that people don't realize and i haven't for a very long time when i was like well if i do everything right then i'm going to be successful hmm. when it's not the case no it is not the case at all um in my case i was really lucky several times and even with, um, I don't know, the, the acquisition of running pixels, um, if that will happen maybe today, maybe the situation is worse everywhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe we were not part of a fire, right? Because it was just one year later and not because our product, our uh, abilities, our skills, uh, it was because the market was different and gone. Yeah. So, yeah. Very, very true. Um, great books. Sounds like I haven't read them, but, um, I'll get some links from you, um, see what's interesting there. And the last question is what is a good habit that you advocate for? Good habit. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will say really good habit around health. Uh, first, what you eat, that's key. Well, but, um, you see this everywhere, but, uh, that's the reality. What do you eat? How long do you sleep? And do any sport every day? Every day. I really need that. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I don't have that, I don't work the same. I'm not as cheerful as I can be. Uh, and my mind, the only moment in the day that um, like is not working 100% thinking of problems with whatever of my work is when I'm doing a sport. Yeah. 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 Meditation is very important for, yeah. for, for mental, mental, Breathing. mental health. Yeah. yeah. And, and fundamentally physical health can help with, um, with your mental health significantly. If you feel good physically, it impacts the way you think and, and your mood that day yeah. and everything. So I think, uh, cause I'm, I exercise as well. I think exercise and the act of training is a good meditation peace to yeah. have every single day but then your body feeling what feeling well is also a good um good for your mental yeah. state and your your health you are less likely to to be sick yeah and that helps a lot and sleeping is also key really good uh, really good advice yeah thank I you so much gurka this is really good. Um, I appreciate you coming all the way from Spain to My do pleasure. this with me. Might be more times. Yes. And uh, really insightful conversation. I know that we'll probably have some more. Um, you're part of the Misfit Founders community and um, we'll probably get an um, Ask Me Anything session sure. done with you as well. And again, thank you so much for My joining. My pleasure. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next episode.